Hi guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry channel. For this video, it's the part 5 video of your 5.1 guess. And it's a very short and simple video where we are going to talk about combined gas law. So what gas law are we going to combine in this video? Let's see. The combined gas law is actually involve your boy's law and your child's law. We can combine both of them and produce a new formula that called combined gas law. And a kind reminder, your boy's law is when your volume is inversely proportional with your pressure at constant 1. What shall remain constant in Boyle's law? At constant temperature and also number of mole. So that is your Boyle's law. While in your child's law, your volume is directly proportional with the temperature. And we have two things that remain constant. And what is going to remain constant in child's law? Volume directly proportional with temperature when your pressure and your number of mole remain constant. That is your boy's law and your child's law, all right? And now we are going to combine them. How do we combine them? So volume is inversely proportional with pressure. Volume is directly proportional with the temperature. That will then give rise to volume directly proportional with temperature, but inversely proportional with pressure when you combine both of this volume directly proportional with temperature you can see over here volume inversely proportional with pressure so that is your combined gas law all right and next how do we form the formula if you remember your v obviously is over one here and we are going to multiply them cross so we have your pressure multiplied with your volume and then your temperature will bring it down multiplied with the 1. That will give rise to your PV over temperature equals to your constant. Alright? That will then give rise to your P1V1 over T1 equals to P2V2 over T2. This is your combined gas law. Alright? So, in every formula that we have discussed, there is some rules that you need to apply. For example, in here, and the most important in here is your temperature. If you remember your T1, T2, both of them is your temperature. And both of this temperature will have one thing in common. They must be in the unit of Kelvin. Alright, your temperature over here must be in the unit of Kelvin. And I hope you remember that from your degree Celsius changing to Kelvin, we are going to plus with 273.15. So this is the conversion from your degree Celsius to Kelvin. And where your temperature in this formula must be in Kelvin. Alright. Next, your P1, P2. Both of this P1 and P2, they can be in any unit. But with one condition, both of them must be in the same unit. If you are using ATM, both of the pressure must be in ATM. If you are using TOR, both of them must be in TOR. Alright? They must be in the same unit. Same apply to your V1 and your V2. Your V1 and V2 volume can be in liter or milliliter with one condition. If you are using liter, both must be liter. If you are using milliliter, both must be milliliter. And as simple as that. Alright? The main restriction that you have in here is your temperature must be in Kelvin. And it's as simple as that, easy. Let's go for the first example. The first example, the volume of a gas fuel balloon is 45 liter. So as always, I put that as my V1. At temperature, 60 degrees Celsius, I'll put that as your T1. Be careful. And 1.89 atm, so I'll say that as a P1. What volume will the balloon have at a standard temperature and pressure? So we are looking for a V2 at standard temperature and pressure. What is mean by standard temperature and pressure? What would be the temperature be? What would be the pressure be at a standard condition? Try to recall that a bit. So as always, before we start, we are going to take out everything and change them into the correct unit that you want. 
So from the question, we have V1 given clearly, 45.0 liter. You have your T1 given in 60 degrees Celsius, but we don't want the degree Celsius. So changing to Kelvin, plus 273.15, that will give rise to 333.15 Kelvin. Changing your degree Celsius to Kelvin straight away. Your P1 pressure is given in 1.89 ATM. So the trick in this question is your standard temperature and pressure given. You need to know what is meant by standard temperature and pressure. So V2 is the one that we are looking for, the volume at standard temperature and pressure. So in this condition, the temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. Standard temperature and pressure is 0 degrees Celsius and also the pressure is 1 atm. And since this is the second condition, so that is my T2 and my P2. See that? And 0 degrees Celsius is definitely not the unit that we want because we know that temperature must be in Kelvin. So we change it into Kelvin by plus with 273.15. That will give rise to 273.15 Kelvin. Alright, see the trick over here? And before we proceed, make sure the unit are correct. So the volume that you have is in liter. So the volume that you're looking for must also be in liter because the unit must be the same. Temperature have no option. Temperature must be in Kelvin. So make sure you have your temperature ready in Kelvin. Next, you have your pressure. Your P1 is in ATM. Therefore, your P2 must also be in ATM. Alright? Because the unit can be different. But with one condition, the unit must be the same. Therefore, make sure both of the pressure are right now in the same unit. Okay? Next, Substitute them into the formula of your P1 V1 over T1 equals to your P2 V2 over T2. Make sure the pairing are correct. So your P1 is 1.89 atm. V1 is 45 liter. Your T1 temperature 1 is 333.15 Kelvin equals to your P2 is a 1 atm. Your V2 is the one that we are looking for. Your T2 is your 273.15 Kelvin. So make sure when you substitute in, you substitute the correct pairing. Okay? And easy, busy. Solve your mathematics. Make sure you press your calculator correctly. Make sure you solve them correctly. And the V2 that you calculated, over here must be in the unit of liter because the volume that you use in V1 is in liter. Therefore, your V2 calculator must also be in liter. The V2 calculator is 69.73 liter. Okay, and that is the final answer. So, after this first example, I hope you realize that how easy to use this formula with one condition every unit must be correct. So the main thing in this entire video will be talking about the unit conversion and etc. Okay, so be careful with the unit that is given to you and be careful with the unit conversion. Next, let's try another example too. A sample of helium gas has a volume of 180 milliliter. So again, that is my V1. At 0 0.75 atm, that is my P1, at 37 degrees Celsius, that is my T1. So I have our V1, P1, T1 given easily. Next, what will be the temperature in degree Celsius? The question asking for temperature T2 in degree Celsius. So make sure you know your final answer is in what unit. Of the gas that has a volume of 100 milliliter, that is my V2, at 2.9 atm, that is my P2. Okay, so as always, take out everything that you have and make sure you check their unit. So the V1 given 180 milliliter. Okay, and then 
you have your P1 given 0 0.75 atm. Next, you have your T1 given 37 degrees Celsius. So milliliter is acceptable, atm is acceptable, but degree Celsius in temperature is not. So what do you do? You convert them into Kelvin by plus 273.15. That will give rise to 310.15 Kelvin. Okay, next, we are looking for T2 over here, but the T2 must be in degree Celsius because the question stated that the question 1 degree Celsius. All right, and the V2 given 100 milliliter. And the P2 given, the pressure given, 2.9 atm. Okay, easy. And as always, guys, what do we check? Unit. Make sure the unit is correct before you do anything. Volume V1 is in milliliter. V2 volume is in milliliter. Okay, proceed. Pressure P1 given in atm. P2 given in atm. Proceed. Okay. T1 given in degree Celsius changing to Kelvin. Yes, because temperature don't have an option. Temperature must be in Kelvin. But be very careful with what you want. The question asking specifically for degree Celsius. Okay. Putting into your formula of P1 V1 over T1 equals to your P2 V2 over T2. Substitute the correct pairing as always. Pressure 1, 0 0.75. Volume 180 milliliter, T1 is 310.15 Kelvin, okay? While your P2 over here given 2.90 atm, volume 200 milliliter, your T2 that you are going to find over here will still be in Kelvin the beginning, okay? Bear that in mind, the temperature must be in Kelvin over here. Alright, solve your mathematics. So your T2 calculated when you solve the mathematics will be 666.2481 and this value will still be in Kelvin because it's from the formula. Even though the question asking for degree Celsius, we are going to change it later. Okay, and knowing that from your degree Celsius to your Kelvin, it's a plus 273.15. So vice versa from Kelvin to degree Celsius, we will be minus 273.15. And changing this Kelvin to degree Celsius will be then minus 273.15. So the T2 in degree Celsius will be 393. 0 0.098 and this will right now be in degree Celsius. So by that in mind, the question asking for degree Celsius. Therefore, you must change your final answer from Kelvin to degree Celsius. Alright, and make sure you can convert your degree Celsius to Kelvin and also vice versa. Okay, as simple as that. Still playing a lot with the unit. Alright, this formula is very simple. We're still playing a lot with the unit. Be very careful with the unit and the pairing. Next, and also the last example for this video, a short video. A 500 ml of an unknown gas has a pressure of 260 torr at room temperature. So that is my V1. That is my P1 in torr and room temperature. That will be my T1. Knowing that your room temperature stands for what? And I hope you know that room temperature stands for how many degrees Celsius? And that to mean the pressure, so this is the P2 that we are looking for. If the volume of the unknown gas decreased by half, so your V2 over here decreased by half, which means it will be half of your V1. Okay? Your V2 will be half of your V1 as stated in the question. And the temperature is heated to 80 degrees Celsius. So your T2 right now is 80 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I hope you understand all the information given here. So as always, we are going to take it out. So your V1 is your 500 milliliter given. 
Your P1 right now is given in talk, 260 talk. While your T1 question stated room temperature. So guys, room temperature stands for how many degrees Celsius? Room temperature represents 25 degrees Celsius. So your T1 over here is 25 degrees Celsius. That will also equals to 298.15 Kelvin because you are going to plus with 273.15. So that is what we mean by room temperature. And I hope that is clear with you. I hope you know what is room temperature stand for. And next, the question asking for P2. Okay, the question asking for P2. If the volume of the unknown gas decreased by half, so your V2 will be half of your V1. That means it will be half of the 500 milliliter. And that will then equals to 250 milliliter. That is the half of your V1. Okay? And the temperature right now, your T2 is heated. So it's 80 degrees Celsius. 80 degrees Celsius, as always, temperature must always be in Kelvin. Plus 273. 0.15 and that will give rise to 353.15 Kelvin. That is the temperature that we want in Kelvin. Okay? And before we do anything, check the unit. Volume is in milliliter. Make sure both of the volume is in milliliter. Done. Pressure given the first one is in torque, therefore your T2 calculated must also be in torque. Okay? Temperature have no other option. Temperature must always be in Kelvin. So make sure your T1, T2 is already converted to Kelvin. Simple. Then we move to your formula, where you know that your formula is P1 V1 over T1 equals to your P2 V2 over T2 where your P1 over here is 260 torr. Your V1 is a 500 milliliter. Your T1 calculated 298.15 Kelvin. Okay? Equals to your P2 is the one that we are looking for. Your V2 is half of your V1, 250 milliliter. Temperature increased up to 353.15 Kelvin. And as always, press your calculator very correctly and you will have your answer. Just a kind reminder, your answer over here must be in the unit of tall because we know that the P1 that we use is in tall. Therefore, the P2 that you have will also be in tall. If the question requested for a different unit, then you shall do the conversion after you get the answer. Okay? And the tall value is 615.92 tall. That is the new pressure calculated. Simple, as easy as this. Alright? And that's it about combined gas law. It's a very easy formula to use. Just be extremely careful with the unit. Alright? The entire topic of gas playing a lot with the unit conversion. Make sure you know the unit conversion and the correct unit to apply in your formula. If you still have any question about combined gas law, drop it in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next video.